live on a budget, be generous, live on less than you make. So you have a plan, you avoid debt, you save money for emergencies and later for investing. Dave Ramsey is giving some straightforward advice about our financial struggles, particularly when it comes to rising inflation. First off, it's crucial not to panic during economic challenges. Recessions happen. It's a natural part of the economic cycle. The number one rule for dealing with a recession is not to panic, and definitely not to buy up all the toilet paper. Let's delve into what defines a recession and who determines it. A recession occurs when the economy shrinks for more than a couple of months. Economists often mention that it involves two consecutive quarters of negative growth in gross domestic product. In simpler terms, GDP represents the total value of all goods and services produced in the economy. Normally, GDP increases each quarter. When it goes down, it signals that businesses are making less money, potentially leading to shutdowns or layoffs. Recessions raise concerns about increased unemployment employment and negatively impact the stock market, causing worries about retirement investments. In a recent episode of The Ramsey Show, Dave Ramsey highlighted the household debt has skyrocketed, reaching an all-time high of $17.29 trillion in the third quarter of this year, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. A significant portion of this debt, around $1.08 trillion, comes from credit card balances. Let's be clear here. The debt Debt is not because of inflation, Ramsey said during the episode. The debt is because you wussed out and refused to cut your freaking lifestyle to offset inflation. Ramsey is quick to make a point. Inflation isn't the culprit behind the surge in debt. Instead, he suggests that people have allowed their lifestyles to be the driving force behind their increasing debt. In his words, the debt is not because of inflation. The debt is because you wussed out and refused to cut your freaking lifestyle to offset inflation. The essence of Ramsey's message is clear. To manage your finances better, especially during times of inflation, you need to take control of your lifestyle choices. It's about making conscious decisions regarding your spending habits, rather than letting external factors dictate your financial situation. He emphasizes a very important point by saying that even with a modest contribution of $100 per month in a conservative growth fund, from the age of 25 to 65, you can save for retirement. However, he adds a significant condition. You can't have a major financial burden like a hefty vehicle payment or an enduring student loan. Ramsey uses a relatable example to drive home this message. You can't have a $750 F-150 payment. You can't have a student loan that's been around so long you think it's a pet. He implies that sometimes we get so accustomed to our debts treating them like familiar companions rather than financial burdens that need to be eliminated. Despite what politicians or economic experts say, declaring an official recession falls under the National Bureau of Economic Research's jurisdiction. The NBER monitors various data like personal income, employment, consumer spending, wholesale retail sales, and industrial production. Even though the GDP decreased for two quarters, the NBER NBER didn't quickly declare a recession. This is normal because the NBER usually takes its time to officially announce a recession. It's important to understand that recessions are a regular part of how the economy works. The economy goes through periods of growth and shrinkage over time, but it generally moves upward. These ups and downs are part of what's known as the business cycle, showing that the economy can bounce back and stay resilient. So, while a decrease in GDP might cause concerns, it's not unusual, and the economy has a history of recovering from such downturns. Aside from GDP, the unemployment rate is a crucial indicator of a recession, as job losses often accompany economic downturns. Presently, the unemployment rate is relatively low at 3.7%. On the flip side, the high inflation experienced doesn't directly indicate a recession. However, it is a concern, leading the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates to combat inflation. Higher interest rates can reduce 
borrowing and spending, potentially pushing the economy into a recession. Also, Ramsey points out the irony that in the pursuit of maintaining a certain lifestyle, many end up working for banks instead of building their wealth. He humorously notes that people work for these stinking banks that have better furniture and bigger buildings than you do. It's a wake-up call to reconsider priorities and regain control over one's financial destiny. As Americans face difficulties contributing to their savings, Ramsey has advised consumers not to rely on credit cards to cushion inflation's blow. We've seen decades since we've been in this bad position, and people are going to fix the inflationary problems, the pressures, with the wrong tool. Ramsey previously told in an interview, he discusses the normalization of debt in American society and globally. Ramsey sees this as a significant hurdle for those trying to save money money, especially for retirement. Instead of actively repaying debts, people often resort to using credit cards and loans to sustain their daily spending habits. This constant reliance on consumer debt has contributed to Ramsey's long-standing role in providing financial advice and according to him, will likely secure his job for many more years. In response to this challenging financial landscape, Ramsey reintroduces his baby steps for financial security. Speaking for the importance of kicking debt to the curb, he suggests starting with an emergency fund of $1,000, which he acknowledges is a bare minimum. Ramsey clarifies that this amount was never intended to be sufficient for anyone. However, it serves as a crucial safety net for unexpected situations. Next, list your debts from smallest to largest and focus on paying them off one by one. Minimum payments go to all debts except the smallest. Attack the smallest debt with everything you've got. This debt snowball method helps you gain momentum. It might take some hard work, but becoming debt free, except for your mortgage, is a significant achievement. Start investing for your future. Put 15% of your income into retirement accounts, especially those with employer matches. This ensures you're preparing for a comfortable retirement. Now, focus on paying off your home loan foster. Imagine the freedom of being completely mortgage free. Now that you're debt free and your home is paid off, it's time to build wealth, invest, save and enjoy your money. Additionally, embrace a spirit of generosity, give back to others and make a positive impact. By following these steps with dedication and discipline, you can pave the way toward financial success. Each step is like a building block, strengthening your financial foundation and bringing you closer to a life free from money stress. Remember, it's about progress, not perfection. Ramsey's advice boils down to taking control of your life, making conscious financial choices. So what do you guys think? Think the recession is going to take us out? Or is it not as much of a danger as we thought it was? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to stay updated.